ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have completed our 10th fast in this holy month of Ramadan, this blessed month, one of the greatest months for the Muslims over the year, both for physical and spiritual reasons. And we find ourselves starting the 11th day of this month. And we know that we have concluded already one third of this month and we only have two thirds left so we still have many days left but if we don't know if we haven't achieved anything in particular in the last 10 days then it's a time to really um, rejuvenate ourselves really motivate ourselves to make the most out of the last 20 days we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all of these fasts and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to see through the rest of the Ramadan in his obedience. So inshallah today we want to share a reminder from Surah Ali Imran and this is verse number 132 to 134 and in these verses there is some golden advice, there is some golden advice for us so that we can attain the forgiveness and Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the two things that we really uh, should be focused on especially in this month and we know that there is an aspect where we are being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single moment so we need to really make that more worthwhile to basically doing those things that are mentioned in the Quran so that we do end up seeking and bringing that forgiveness towards us as well as we want to attain Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the ultimate pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he gives his servant Jannah. However, we should just remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Jannah from his own mercy. It's not that no matter what actions we do, we won't be able to attain Jannah. But then what do we attain? What do we attain or what do we strive so hard for? We strive hard for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jannah is only a ple- is only a result of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in essence that if we do these few things, if we keep in control these few things, then inshallah through this Quranic advice we will be able to we will be able to make the most not just out of this month but out of our whole life in this dunya. So the ayahs, the ayats, they start with وَأَتِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that obey Allah and the messenger so that you may be shown mercy, you may be given mercy. Now here we know that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is connected to his obedience. Many of us today, especially when we look around the world, we kind of observe you could say we we make this observation that there is a lack of mercy in this world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us first of all there isn't a lack of mercy however the mercy sometimes isn't directed towards us and that's because of our disobedience towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is why it's so important that we become more conscious in terms of our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will see a difference within the environment that we live in, within the community that we live in, within the country, the world that we live in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will become more appropriate. Then, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that race towards, race against each other, towards maghfirah. And I'm not going to translate the word maghfirah just yet because there is a lot of different opinions in accordance with the Sahaba here. And it really shows the flexibility of this world, a word and how we will be able to attain much more. So the, the ayah says that Sari'u ila maghfiratim mir rabbikum, That race against each other. Meaning that you know when it comes to first of all we do know there's an ayah in the Quran where it tells us that do not 
compete with, they do not become jealous or envious. However, this ayah does indicate, but when it comes to good actions, when it comes to things that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can envy each other. And we find this in a hadith as well, that a person is allowed to think, or when he sees somebody else doing so much good for the sake of Allah, he's allowed to be envy of it and ask Allah to grant him the same. So this is what it means that we should encourage each other, we should compete with each other, and if that means that we put each other to the test, we, uh, we make the environment such that we're creating a system where people are learning, people are becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of this is good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say that race against each other ila maghfiratin mir rabbikum you know bringing maghfirah from your lord wa jannatin arduha samawatu wal ard and a jannah so race towards a jannah meaning to towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the result will be jannah which whose width arduha meaning its width as samawatu wal ard is what is in the heavens and the earth Imam Fakhruddin Razi, he translates the word ard here as the price, meaning the price of Jannah is more than what is in the heavens and the earth. And he has been prepared for the believers. Now here, continuing to the next ayah. So what does maghfirat mean? <clears throat> So the word maghfirat, according to our scholars, so according to Sahaba ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that it means competing towards Islam, meaning the whole deen. Abu Aliya, he says that it is competing towards hijrah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that it is calling towards salah, that we should compete with each other towards salah. Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that it is competing towards perfection of obedience. And Ikrama, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, says it is competing towards Tawbah. Our Mufti, Mufti Muhammad Shafi Uthmani, he concludes to say that looking at all of the narrations when it comes to competing in good deeds, it is actually referring to competing in the whole of the deen, which is anything that is good, then we should compete towards that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he carries on and he explains who is the muttaqin. And this is the three golden advice or the three golden characteristic that we can implement in our life right from today. So that we become those people who are competing towards good deeds, etc. Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرْوَاءُ That those people, so those people who will be given Jannah, those people who will be earning the maghfirat, earning all of the good things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people are who يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرْوَاءِ وَالدَّرْوَاءُ Those people who spend in good times and bad times, meaning difficult times and times of prosperity. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ Those people who swallow their anger. وَالْعَاثِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those people who forgive people. Who forgive, pardon people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who are excellent. So from muttaqi, which is one level of iman, to muhsin, which is the ultimate level of iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left three actions in place. And if we do these three actions, bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be able to attain this daraja, this rank. And this goes, the actions are, the first is to spend at a time of need and at a time of prosperity. And this has three particular, particular benefits. Number one is that when a person is poor, they realize that it's not how much charity we give, it's the fact that we do give charity. A lot of us, we complain and say, we don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of money, so I can't give charity. So it reminds you that there is an aspect in Islam where we are able to spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even at the time of, of hardship. There's two ways. Number one is to give a little with a big intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't look at how much we gave, but he looks at our heart when we gave it. The other is to give other than money. So it could be that to give other than money. So many a times we see that there's many ways to give sadaqah apart from giving money. There's one hadith by one sahaba radiallahu anhu, he didn't have a lot of money to give, but he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I give this little that I find 
and but I give my charity, give my honor as a charity that I will never be angry with anybody else. And what that means is he has decided to fix his environment, to contribute towards his environment, his community, by staying cool all the time. So you could see even that was an accepted form of charity. And this narration was, uh, was recorded by Imam Fakhruddin al razi in his Tafsir Kabir. The next is Wal Kadhimin al Ghaida, those people who swallow their anger. Now we spoke, we, we can speak about how dangerous anger is. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he praises a man when he controls his anger instead of, instead of taking, beating people, instead of um, attacking people, instead of cursing, etc. And there's many, many uh, things that can go wrong when a person becomes angry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing Jannah for that person who guarantees their anger. And kaadhi mean al ghay what does it mean? It means that when a person... When a person swallows their anger to the extent that, to the extent that you don't even know that they were angry. So, you know, when you see somebody, they become so angry that they become almost red. But then suddenly there is no sign of their anger anymore. That is Kaadhimin al Ghaib. They literally swallowed it. It's not that I had a fit, I had a rage, I swore, I shouted, I fought. And then after that, I said, I'll just be patient now. That's not called controlling the anger. The controlling the anger here is kaadhimin al to completely swallow it. nas and those who pardon people. That we're always in constant pardoning. That when somebody barges us, we pardon them. When somebody does us wrong, we pardon them. We realize that human beings make mistakes. We realize that people around us can't always be perfect. And we're always forgiving them. But yes, if somebody does something wrong to us, then we go through the proper channels, the proper systems to resolve it. That is still part of pardoning. But we ensure that we're always forgiving people. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who are excellent. Meaning that they cover this level. That they go beyond this level to this level so that they can achieve the, the waj, the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To conclude, there's a very interesting story that Imam Al-Bayhaqi narrates. And this is in regards to Hazrat Ali Zainul Abidin Ibn Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this is the great grandson of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the report says that once a maid was helping him do wudu, when all of a sudden the water slipped out of her hands, spilling water all over the all over Hazrat Ali Zainul Abidin. Now his clothes got wet, it was natural that he'd get angry. The maid sensed the danger. Because obviously those days slave girls, the maids, if they were to make their masters angry, they would think that the master will beat them up. So in this case she started Rep uh, reciting this ayah, she looked at him and said, "Wal kaadhimin al ghayda, wal aafin ani nas," meaning that swallowing the anger, those who swallow the anger, and those who forgive the people. Hearing this, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's grand great grandson, his anger completely calmed down, and he became totally silent. Suddenly, uh, the maid she read, "Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin," and since that sentence, he says that Allah loves those people who forgive or who go and do what is excellent so he thought to himself how can i make this a better situation and suddenly he decided to free his slave and freeing a slave is a very powerful act of good deed why because you are restoring humanity to where it's supposed to be so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really give us tawfiq to look at the Qur'an in this manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put these three golden qualities in our life, instill, the, instill our lives with it, and make us part of an ummah which is more forgiving, an ummah which is more excellent in deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to spend the rest of the Ramadan in peace, in, in, in prosperity, in such a way that we are able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also give us the tawfiq to spend in this Ramadan, be it a time of sarra or darra, be a time of prosperity or a time of difficulty. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.